have arrived. Our first stop of the day, Desert Memorial Park Cemetery. All right, we found his section at least. Let's go see if we can find the actor, musician, comedian, kind of the brains behind Sonny and Cher, and also <laughs> a uh, state representative and mayor of Palm Springs. So if you see the flagpole in here, there's actually a little memorial to Sonny at the bottom of this flagpole that I want to look at. So here you can see it says America's Plaza, dedicated to the lawmakers and public servants of our community on the anniversary of Congressman Sonny Bono's death. And so from here to find Sonny, he's just on the other side of this bush. Well, here side by his mother, Jean, is Sonny Bono. You can see it says, and the beat goes on because Sonny wrote that song. Sonny was maybe not the most musically talented or gifted person in the world, but he did a lot with what he had. And even from the time he was in high school in Inglewood, California, even though he couldn't play an instrument very well, he was writing songs and even won a songwriting contest, which inspired him to, after school, want to pursue being a musician and songwriter. Now his mother actually said, you know, we were we were supportive of it. We thought he could do anything he set his mind to because he was very persistent. But it didn't work out right away. You see, you can't just decide you're going to be a famous songwriter or celebrity without trying. And so he had to take odd jobs to get his foot in the door of just having time to write songs. So he ended up uh, getting married and his brother-in-law owned a meat packing company that sold meat to all the restaurants up and down Sunset Boulevard. So Sonny worked as a meat delivery man for him. And he said once a week he would take his guitar and on his route when he was dropping off meat, he would literally hop out with his bloody apron and he would run in the record labels that were on Sunset and in the area and play them a song to see if maybe they liked what he was doing. He said he did this for about a year before he really got anywhere, and when he did get somewhere, it was totally by accident. So it actually happened one day when Sonny was making a drop off in the area and stopped in Specialty Records, went in to play him a song, and the owner was in there yelling at one of his producers and said, you call this music? Anybody could produce better music than this. Pointed at Sonny and said, do you want a job? And Sonny took the job, and from then on, ended up becoming a producer, kind of a hands-on man at Specialty Records and did a little bit of everything, including penning his first song. Well, his first hit song anyway. Sonny wrote a song called Needles and Pins that the searchers ended up recording, and it was a little bit of a hit. And in fact, the Ramones since have even re-recorded that, Cher recorded that, and um, what ended up happening was Sonny really got inspired after having this hit. He knew he had the ability to do it and ended up getting a job with Phil Spector as basically, as Ronnie Spector said, was a, he was basically a gopher. He did a little bit of everything. He ran errands, anything that was needed in the studio he did. And she said he really showed his worth because he would do hand claps, foot stomps, uh, patting his knees, anything that was needed on a recording. And he would even sing back up on those because even though he didn't have, um, you know, enough talent, they said even when he wrote songs, he was so, uh, I guess not talented at playing instruments um, so much so that he could grab a chord on the piano, he could play it with one hand, and so he would write his songs just by finding chords. He couldn't actually play the song all the way through with his fingers. But his voice was unique. Phil Spector saw what he was, you know, that he was motivated to do this. And after a year of working with Phil Spector, learning, singing back up, doing all this, and one of the reasons Phil said he liked his voice was because it was thin and kind of funky and different. Sonny decided to move on and go off and try and make a name for himself. And that's when he met Cher. Sonny Bono was 28 years old and he met Cher, who was only 16, but he knew that she had star quality. And one of her problems was that she was very introverted and was very, very shy. So he saw her ability and first when he tried to record her, she had trouble singing in the recording, so he would hop in the booth with her to give her confidence, and then he would say, I'll get you going, and then I'll hop out, and then you'll be singing by yourself. But in the end, their voices sounded so good together 
that it kind of worked. And then when Cher would try and perform solo shows, she would get nervous. So Sonny ended up just going out and performing with her to kind of ease the nerves. They would go out and do, you know, local shows. They didn't have a ton of talent originally. The songs weren't all that great, but Sonny was smart enough to know that he had something with Cher, something between them. And he started working on these elaborate costumes, these costumes that people wouldn't help but notice and wouldn't forget. And so that's originally what got their foot in the door, eventually signing a record contract and recording I Got You Babe. And I Got You Babe basically overnight became a smash sensation. Now when Sonny and Cher started performing together, they didn't go by Sonny and Cher, they actually went by Caesar and Cleo. And when they signed that first record deal, they decided maybe they should change their name and that's when they went with Sonny and Cher. Now, they did pretty well for a couple of years throughout the 60s. Sonny was writing great songs and it really worked between the two of them. However, when music started to change, Sonny just wasn't inspired by what was happening and he couldn't write music to keep up with that and ended up deciding, well, maybe Cher should be an actress. And so he took what little money they had left, which was a lot at that time, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars, but he decided to go all or nothing and invested in a movie called Chastity, starring Cher. And of course, they would eventually have a daughter named Chastity, but the movie was not a success, unfortunately. So they ended up having to go back out on the road and they kind of developed somewhat of a lounge act. They started performing Vegas and doing these shows together. And since they knew each other so well, they had this great rapport. They would joke around on stage where Sonny was always the butt of the joke. He was always the straight man and Cher got to be the comedy. She got to say the funny lines and it was always her kind of demeaning him and that's what people really liked. So when a uh, television exec went out and saw them perform live doing their cabaret stuff, he wasn't really that impressed by their music, but what he said was he loved their rapport on stage, the bickering back and forth, and that's how they ended up getting the show, Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, which became a huge smash sensation. Now on the surface, they seem like the greatest couple in the world because they got along great, they seemed like they were in love, and on the show they were just so compatible, but behind the scenes, Cher said that the bigger Sonny got as far as his fame, the more women he needed. And he, you know, he just was doing it so much that she said one woman wasn't enough, sometimes five women wasn't enough, and she just got tired of it because she said, you know, I met him when I was so young, I didn't really know who I was, and I didn't really get a chance to be who I was. When I was with Sonny, she said, I never talked back, I never questioned, I always let him make the decisions for the both of us, and for over a decade, that started to eat away at her and she decided that she couldn't take the cheating, she didn't want to do this anymore, and that she wanted to break off on her own. Sonny said he never saw this coming. He thought that they would be married forever, and so this was a big shock to him, especially because he was basically served a divorce paper uh, two days before they were going to film their last show together. And then when the divorce finally went through, they were actually living in the same house, but living separate lives and in separate wings of the house, uh, two days after the divorce was final, Cher was married to Greg Allman. Now after the divorce, Sonny's mom said that he was really depressed because this was just a complete blow to his life. But they tried to move on. Sonny got his own show, basically like the Sonny and Cher show. It was a comedy show, but it was his own. And it only lasted 13 weeks before they canceled it. Um, then Cher had her own show and it lasted two years before they canceled it. And it's crazy to think that, you know, the Sonny and Cher show was originally a mid-season replacement that just took off. So it was, you know, sometimes things just feel like they're meant to be. Once they started doing shows separately, they weren't a success. And even with Cher having big name guests, it wasn't the same, it just wasn't the same feel as Sonny. And so even though they were divorced, they decided to give it another try and they got another variety show and they did this show for about a year and a half and it just didn't have the same spark because since they weren't married people didn't find the ribbing quite as amusing or quite as charming anymore. Now Cher continued to perform and continued to make movies and uh, to be a part of Hollywood but Sonny said it's almost like Hollywood turned their back on him. They didn't want to give him any chances and the only things he could really get were guest appearances on TV shows and he said you know 
when you're doing guest appearances on TV shows, it means one of two things. Either you're on your way up or you're on your way down. And judging by my age, I was pretty sure that I wasn't on my way up. And that's actually kind of how I ever heard of Sonny and Cher was um, Golden Girls. Sonny made an appearance on Golden Girls dating uh, Dorothy, but there was also an episode where Dorothy and Sophia were entering a talent show and they were going as Sonny and Cher and Sophia was Sonny and I remember going, who is this? What is this? My mom telling me about who Sonny and Cher were because I had only seen Moonstruck at that time so I did know who Cher was but I had no clue who Sonny was. So Cher was a success and Sonny was pretty much forgotten about and so Sonny was doing uh, Fantasy Island and Love Boat and things like that and he said it was almost like divine intervention because one day he was doing an appearance on Fantasy Island he was working with Hervé and when he went to call him Tattoo he accidentally called him Pontoon Hervé kicked him and Sonny said that was my wake-up call that was my that was my final straw that told me I was not meant to do this and that what my talents were they just were not being utilized and I had to find something else to do with my life. So what Sonny decided to do was he decided to go into business and he decided to open a restaurant, an Italian restaurant which started in Los Angeles but it was doing so well that he started a chain of them and ended up opening one here in Palm Springs, met his future wife who was somewhat younger than him. I believe he, at the time he was 50 and she was 22. They fell in love. They moved their whole life out to Palm Springs and something at Sonny's restaurant changed the course of his life. So let me go show you where the restaurant was and tell you what happened and tell you basically his life here in Palm Springs. So the cemetery that Sonny's buried in is actually in Cathedral City, technically. So now we're gonna drive about 20 minutes to Palm Springs. Now located on the former site of what was Bono's is now 64 at the Riv. Originally there was a Radisson here and Conference Center and then on the other side was Sonny Bono's restaurant and tennis club. Now what ended up happening was Sonny opened his restaurant and Apparently, Palm Springs said that the sign that he was going to display was too big. So this really infuriated him. He said, you know, I'm a resident here. I'm a business owner here. I should be able to have a big sign if I want to. So he went and tried to fight it at City Hall. So we've made it over to City Hall. And ironically, there's a statue of the mayor, Frank Bogert, that was the mayor before Sonny became mayor. Now what happened was, and Frank did not like Sonny, if you see interviews, he did not care for him. It says on here that he was the mayor from 1953 to 1966, then again from 1982 to 1988. Now Sonny came in to talk to Frank, apparently, and to fight for his sign and they unfortunately told him that they weren't gonna do anything about it, so Sonny had a better idea of how to deal with this. Yeah, believe it or not, a man who had never cast a vote in his life, Sonny Bono decided, I'm gonna run for mayor of this city, and that's exactly what he did. He ran for the mayor of Palm Springs. Now what's interesting is that he wasn't a very good speaker originally, but he came into his own, and ironically, the night of the election, Cher was also up for an Academy Award for Moonstruck. And so that night, Sonny got to claim victory by having the largest margin of victory in Palm Springs history. And Cher also won her Academy Award. Now Sonny served his term as mayor here in Palm Springs, then he ran for senator. He did not successfully win that race, but he ran again as um, state representative and became a congressman. Now, unfortunately, Sonny um, perished in a fatal skiing accident on uh, a family trip to Lake Tahoe. And since they have a statue to Sonny here in town, we should go take a look at it, don't you think? Work 
working on my desert glow. Well, maybe we'll just go to the Louvre instead. They just told them 10 people in the building, including employees, so they're holding him outside. Not exactly the Bono we're looking for, but here's Cal David and Lori Bono, guitarists, singers, composers, founder of Blue Guitar. Of course, here's Elvis. Always gotta point out Elvis. And I feel like you should always point out Lucy, too, when you see Lucy. Just hanging out here by herself. Every store in Palm Springs is pretty much open. Look at all these great Andy Warhol themed benches. See? Hello, Tiki God. This leads us right over to Sunny, as a matter of fact. Apparently we are standing on the former site of the Oasis Hotel. It says the Oasis Hotel constructed in 1923, contained approximately 20 units and included the tower building, the only three-story hotel building in Palm Springs for many years. The 40 foot tower with its pyramid roof provided access to the upper story room and rooftop area. The topmost room was called Loretta Young's room because it was her favorite in Palm Springs. Then as we walk up here, like I said, it literally will run us right into Sunny, where that red light is. It's where his statue sits every day for all the Palm Springs visitors and residents to take their picture and be greeted by maybe one of their favorite mayors here. They actually say that his years in Palm Springs, like the last decade of his life, was probably his happiest. And that his last wife was his, the real love of his life, even though Cher was maybe one of his best friends, said that his last wife was really truly the woman he was meant to be with. Looks like a lot of people are sitting on his lap, <laughs> or rubbing his lap. And if you're wondering where Sunny Star is, well, it's right here in front of him. And in a weird twist, uh, after he passed away, his wife ran for his seat and was elected to the Congress, so wowza. <laughs> Great Sonny Bono. Man who could laugh at himself, could write the jokes that made fun of him, and really was responsible for the whole career of Sonny and Cher. Cher herself said at his funeral that there was no one in her world that she had ever met quite like Sonny and that he was definitely the most unique of all people and he meant a lot to her, as you can imagine. Then right here where his hand is, there's a little uh, placard here that says, in memory of Sonny Bono, Mayor of Palm Springs 1988 to 1992 and Congressman of USA 1996 to 1998. I was gonna take us over to his last house, but unfortunately, you really can't see anything other than the front gate. Well, my friends, I hope you all enjoyed this vlog to a man who led quite an interesting life. I mean, he really did a lot in a very little amount of time and left quite a legacy behind. Thank you, Angie Jones, Thomas Wick, David Dorward, and Ellen Newth for becoming my newest Patreons. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night, everyone.